Ooh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 237 of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. I'm your host, Lewis Spears. Happy to be here. Uh, I want to start off this episode right off the bat with addressing some controversy about the show. Uh, I messed up. I made a mistake and uh, I won't be apologizing. However, I will be acknowledging my error, which, by the way, is a great way to get out of uh, uh, apologizing is, is, is just go, no, you're right. Yes, I made a mistake. What I did was wrong and uh, I'll never do it again. And I have wronged you and you are right to be angry at me. And then you just kind of skip over the apology. You know, when someone does that to you, where, you, where, where it's like you, everyone knows that you fucked up. It's not about saying that you fucked up. I just want to hear the sorry. You know, when someone doesn't give you the sorry and it makes you angry. And then three months later, you find yourself not giving the sorry to someone else. Guys, I'm not giving you the sorry, but I will say this. I made an Instagram story recently advertising last week's episode of Spearhead Sundays, which was incredibly good. Check it out if you haven't yet, okay? I, I talked about, uh, I believe, attaching Keelan to a crane and using it to uh, disfigure him. It's great. Um, <laughs> uh, I, however, did re refer to the Spearhead Sundays podcast as, you know, with an abbreviation. As I am wont to do, I'm a very busy man. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't often have time to write out the full word, Spearhead Sundays. It's a lot of characters. That's a big word. That's very a, a very large sentence. I'm a busy man. I don't always have the time to write Spearhead Sundays. I'm busy. I decided to get around this by abbreviating the podcast. I, I would now like to say that that was an error in judgment and I will no longer be referring to the Spearhead Sundays podcast as the SS podcast. <laughs> because as I have been informed by people, even though I didn't need to be informed, this is something that no one should really need to be informed about, it's not the best idea to brand yourselves as the SS, you know? The SS podcast sounds a little bit Nazi. And with the way that I look and the way that the podcast is branded with the red and the white and the black, also adding in the SS podcast might make a few people who were already suspicious go, I knew it, okay? So all I'm saying is, if you're the type of guy, if you're the type of straight white guy who slicks his hair back, don't also be the type of guy who has a podcast called the SS Podcast because a few people are going to make a few assumptions without, re without listening. And to be fair, that's a fair enough assumption. If some guy who looks like... If I saw a guy that looked like me going, guys, make sure you check out the SS Podcast. It is very good. I would go, you know what? I think that's a little bit Nazi-esque. So, with that in mind, I will no longer be calling it the SS Podcast, but because the Spearhead Sundays Podcast is still too long, I've instead decided to shorten it. It's not going to be called the SS Podcast. That's too dangerous, too short. It's not going to be called Spearhead Sundays, too long. It's going to be called the Hitler Youth Podcast. No, it's not! <laughs> I'm too old. Guys, welcome to Spearhead Sundays. It will not be abbreviated. Maybe it'll be SHS. But isn't that like, uh, you know, how come fucking Goku never gets in trouble for, for going SS, Super Saiyan? They always go SS Goku. They put a J in there for some reason when they abbreviate it. I would say that out of me and the Japanese... I feel like I have to have less to worry about being seen as aligned with Nazis. You know what I mean? Because uh, from memory, I wasn't there, but I did go to school. I believe that the Japanese were pretty buddy-buddy with Hitler. <laughs> so why does Goku get to be called SS Goku, but I can't abbreviate my own show? It says Spirit Sun is on a logo. Give me the benefit of the doubt. Anyway, guys, welcome to Spearhead Sundays. Uh, I, I've I've had a good week, dude. I started watching I started watching a new show. I started watching The Stand by uh, uh, by uh, it's on Amazon Prime. Uh, 
Stephen King, based on Stephen King's uh, novel, which I've always been meaning to read. He's one of my favorite authors, but I thought, fuck it, he's got so many books. Stephen King's one of those authors where you'll just never, you'll never get to enjoy everything that he does. I feel like I'm now that type of comedian where I just put out too much shit uh, that it's impossible to watch everything. So, you know, sometimes you'll be like, oh, I, I reckon I'll listen to Luke and Lewis today, but uh, you know, I think he's rebranding Speared Sundays to be a bit more Nazi alliance. I reckon I'll skip that this week, you know? So I'm kind of doing that with Stephen King. I'm going to go, I'm going to, I'm going to watch the stand. I'm probably not going to read it. It's fucking awesome. It's, uh, it, it's, it's a little bit, look, Considering what we've all gone through as a society together with COVID, the premise of the show, uh, which I'm sure was planned far before COVID, is a little bit funny. A virus wipes out 99% of the human population, but then there's a supernatural element to it. It's really cool. I'm not going to spoil it, but... Uh, there's like a, there's two figures that are just gathering people around them Uh the survivors, the people who are immune to build two different societies. And from, I'm only a few episodes in, but it seems like uh, God and the devil have each chosen an avatar of themselves and are trying to get the type of person who would be aligned with either God or the devil to their side so that one of them will inherit the earth, basically, whether it will be God's chosen people or the devil's chosen people. So it's fucking really interesting. I recommend you watch. It's not it's not very COVID at all. The disease is almost like the just in episode one, and they go, "This is what happens," and then you just kind of move forward. It's very interesting. It's it's shot really cool. It's uh it's a good watch. Um, speaking of God's chosen people, let's let's tackle the Israel Palestine uh, conflict. You're not allowed to call it a conflict anymore. That's uh that's not allowed. Apparently, uh, you know, nations that have been at war since one of them was created isn't a conflict. Uh, that's that's the biggest fucking issue with people trying to solve any issue at the moment is the policing of language. It's like. I look at two groups of people fighting. That's a conflict. Yes, one of them is much more powerful. They have an iron dome. The other one has uh, has 10-year-olds with rocks. All right? That doesn't mean it's not a conflict. Just because if, if I walked into the ring with Mike Tyson and he beat the fuck out of me and then shot me with a rocket launcher from space, it's still a conflict. Whether or not it's one side, it doesn't mean it's not a conflict. It can be a one-sided conflict, but if someone talks about the issue and is supportive of your own standpoint and then you come in to yell at them about their use of the word conflict, you're not helping the cause at all. That is the biggest problem with social media activism is that these cunts can't change anything in the real world, but what they can change is what some anonymous account with an anime profile picture describes the issue. That's all they can change is how the issue is described. Cunts are getting shelled from orbit and every white person on Instagram is going, uh, don't call it a conflict. All right, dude, let's call it the worst thing that's ever happened. What does that do to change it? Can we do some things to change, please? Now, I'm not doing anything either because I don't know the, the solution to it. I think it's horrific what's happening. Um... And uh, I don't know how to solve it. I'm fucking 27, but I do think that it's funny. All of the all of the like Gen Z Zoomers on TikTok. All I'm seeing is, ah, oh, why aren't we talking about this? Why aren't we talking about this? Uh, dude, I don't know if if you're familiar with the year 1946, but that's when this shit started. It's been talked about and argued about since then. It's been happening since then. And it seems to me only to be getting worse or better if you're on the side of Israel. Do you know what I mean? Like, uh, to me, it looks worse. I don't know. It's a, it seems like a fucking horrific situation. All, I know there's a lot of different contexts around it and, and, and like, you know, Hamas have done some terrible things as well, but I just keep going back to the map, like the original map of, of, of what the size that Israel and Palestine were when that was all set up after World War II, when they were given their land that they were denied and after, after going through so many horrible things, the land that the Jewish people were given, which I, which, which, which I don't even, I mean, that's a whole other issue, right? 
the issue of can you just fucking give someone land? You can't give someone land without taking it from someone else. So that's a whole other thing. I just go back to the fucking map of when uh, Israel and Palestine were like, or when Israel was founded, sorry. It's like this size and then you look at it today and it is like that size and Palestine is fucking tiny. And it's like, okay, let's say that Palestine were the instigator and they did all of these terrible things. Let's say that's true. Does that mean it's okay to take their land? I'm leaning with no. Do you know what I mean? So, I don't know. It's it's a fucking horrific conflict and I hope it's resolved. It doesn't look like it's ever going to be resolved. Uh, and it looks, look, to me, it looks like if you look at the harsh reality, it looks like Palestine's going to lose this one uh, because it's just getting smaller and smaller and smaller and that can only happen so many times until it's gone, which I think is pretty fucking horrific and terrible. Why can't everyone live in peace, man? Um, but here's my thoughts on it. I understand that everyone's really passionate about this. And, and uh, what is interesting is seeing like, it's almost like being pro-Israel is the, is the minority opinion. Whereas I'm only 27. I remember back in uh, like 2011, 12, when I first started like learning about this online, pro-Israel definitely to me at least seemed to be the majority opinion. Now it looks like it's flipping, uh, which is interesting to see. Uh, I don't know if that's going to change the, the the outcome because the only thing that the only opinion that really matters honestly is like the opinion of people who live in Israel. As long as they are pro that they will do that because it's not like, you know, America is absolutely helping and funding, but I'm sure if all of the funding was cut, they'd probably be doing that shit anyway. So the only thing that's truly going to sway it is uh, to me, at least opinion within Israel, but it is interesting seeing uh, like the, what seems to be, you know, most people online, which doesn't mean most people in the world kind of going, Hey, this is really fucked what's happening, which I agree with, but I do think, right, my main thoughts on this is I'm not sure the best way to solve the Israel and Palestine conflict is to send death threats to the actress who played Wonder Woman. You know, like, I don't know if that is the best way to solve the issue is going, oh my God, look what Israel's doing to these poor Palestinians. I'm going to tell Gal Gadot to kill herself. <laughs> That's, and I don't know if, uh, maybe she could be in charge. I haven't Googled it. Does anyone, has anyone checked to see if, if Gal Gadot has taken uh, that Netanyahu guy's job? Has anyone checked that Net Netanyahu isn't just Gal Gadot in a mask? Has anyone checked that? You know, like if, if fuck, if, if one day Netanyahu or however the fuck you say the cunt's name rocks up to the UN meeting dressed as Wonder Woman, I'll be a little bit suspicious and maybe then I'll think about messaging Gal Gadot on Instagram. Not with a death threat, just with a request like, hey, can you ease up? You know, I don't know if, 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 if committing genocide is, is going to be the best for your, uh, for your chances at, at Wonder Woman 3. Maybe that could be Wonder Woman 3, you know? Like Wonder Woman goes to the Gaza Strip to sort it out, you know. That could that I would watch that movie. I don't think it would it would make a lot of money, but I would see it. Uh, Gal Gadot's written this terrible thing. I don't know. It's it's like why I I get that she's she served in the army, uh, but she has to. That's like a that's like a if you grew. I don't know if she grew up in Israel. I assume she did. But if you live there, you have to serve in the military. So whether or not you agree with it, she was drafted. So uh, to me, that's not exactly. Is that did she grow up there? Yeah. yeah, she did. So she was drafted. So you don't like maybe her opinion has changed. But even if it hasn't, yelling at her does nothing. You know what I mean? She's written something like, oh, this is terrible. I hope they can sort it out and figure out peace and no one deserves this, which I think is a reasonable take. It's such a hard issue because you can't give someone land without taking it from someone else. Um, and I don't know. I don't, I don't have the issues. I don't have the answers, but I do know the answer is not 
messaging every Jewish famous person on the planet death threats. I don't think that is the solution to the to the Israel-Palestine conflict. I just don't know. Like, like I don't know. Like, if I have a problem with with my if, if I have a Jewish neighbor and he keeps throwing rocks through my window, I'm not gonna send a death threat to Woody Allen. That's not gonna help. It's really not going to help. I might, I might go and talk to him and sort it out. I don't know. Every time I look into it, I'm just left with this is fucked and it seems irreparably fucked. It's one of those issues that just, yeah, it just seems irreparably fucked where you're like, oh, well, you know, why don't they just give the land back? And then, and, and then, but then that's going to displace all of the people that moved in. And yes, they took it, but did... Did they take it on instruction or did they, did they just fucking live there? And then what happens to to that? And then, I don't know. And, and, then, and then it's like the other thing of like Israel is surrounded by all these countries that don't really like them. It's like this giant geopolitical complex fucking thing that does not have one answer. But maybe, just maybe... If we can get a few more Instagram stories made, like a few, like a couple more, I reckon we could sway this issue. I reckon we could maybe, maybe if a few more Instagram stories with like, but not ugly ones either, you know, like sure, put some facts in there or make some up, whatever. That what really matters is making the Instagram aesthetically pleasing. If you can make that Instagram aesthetically pleasing enough and enough like uh, influencers with OnlyFans put it on their story, maybe we can solve this thing. Mix in a couple of death threats to, to, to Gal Gadot and maybe, just maybe, we can sort this out as a human race. Good luck, everyone. It is really funny watching... Um, uh, it's in it is interesting watching all of these politicians in America stand up for Israel and then and then just get absolutely fucking demolished online. I've never seen that before. It's there's always been that, but it's always been like an argument, like a 50-50 type thing or, or or with most people like not caring at all and going, "Oh, they I assume that's true." Now, at least at the moment, it's probably not going to last. None of this shit does. It seems like uh Standing up publicly for Israel is like a death sentence for your reputation. It's really interesting. I've never seen that before. Um, like even fucking DJ Khaled was getting flamed for not standing up for Palestine because his uh, his parents uh, were born in Palestine. I don't think he was, but his parents were. And he's he's just released an album. And every time he posts a, a photo uh, uh, about his album... No one seems excited about it, which for DJ Khaled albums isn't unusual, but it is strange seeing him post about his album and instead of the comments being filled with, shut up, bro, we don't care, go to the gym, what happened to Weight Watchers, it's instead full of a bunch of uh, Arabic people calling him a traitor and going, come on, dude, you have to say something, you have to say something. And then DJ Khaled like caved to the pressure and made a statement that basically said nothing, which was just, oh, this is bad. I do not like war and I hate when people die. And everyone was like, hey, could you maybe maybe uh, take a stance beyond bad things not good? It's really interesting. It's very, uh, it's, it, it's a, it is a, and also people go, oh, it's not a complex issue. Yes, it fucking is. Obviously, the, the acts are very simple and bad and like doing bad things are bad. But the reason why they happen and the path to stopping them from happening again is incredibly complex. You know, the issue of, oh, should, should, children's be, should children get shelled by rockets? No, that's a simple answer. Stopping that from happening is incredibly complex whether or not you like it and trying to simplify it down into this tiny thing completely minimizes the issue. And I'm not saying that it's not fucked. I'm saying that of course it's complex and trying to simplify it isn't doesn't fucking help. <laughs> 
as much as people think. But I don't know, guys. I'm just an idiot that failed high school from Australia, okay? So feel free to yell in the comments with each other. My honest thoughts on it, as an incredibly intelligent person with the answers, is bad things are bad. And I don't like it when bad things happen. And I think that we should all come together and do something good. You want to simplify the issue? You're going to get a simplified answer. That's I love that's what that's basically what DJ Khaled said. And and also uh, can can we just not give a fuck about what DJ Khaled has to say? Like does anyone really need to hear the opinion who needs to hear DJ Khaled's opinion on the Israel Palestine conflict? Like, fuck, man, I've been pretty undecided on this, but I wonder what the guy who doesn't make his own music thinks. <laughs> hey, you see that? Hey, you see that guy who's been on a jet ski for three days at nighttime, lost, <laughs> and instead of calling the police for help, he decides to Snapchat it? I wonder what he thinks about Israel Palestine. Maybe he has some good answers. I don't think I'm I know I know that. It's more of a symbolic thing. And as a guy who has Palestinian family, people wanted to say something. But being unsatisfied with what he said is kind of dumb because if you ask for that kind of opinion on anything, you're going to be very unsatisfied. Unless you're, unless you're like, hey, DJ Khaled, what are we having for dinner? In that case, you're going to be very satisfied. Look at the size of the cunt. You'll be too satisfied. Anyway, guys, before I get myself cancelled, let's move on. Speaking of being cancelled, dude, my segues are on fire today. James Charles, he's done. He's over. He's finished. It's all over for James Charles again. How many times is that guy going to get cancelled? You know what's an even better question? How many times can evidence of you hitting on underage boys be released before... Anything happens, <laughs> you know? Like, I feel like maybe if I had one screenshot of me hitting on an underage boy, that might take me out. But James Charles seems to have a few more in the tank. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like I, I reckon that James Charles, looking at the public perception of him at the moment, he has at least three or four more boys in the tank. And maybe he literally has three or four more boys in the basement. We don't know. Because he hasn't properly been cancelled yet. How many times can you hit on aggressively young-looking dudes, get caught for it, do it again, and then get caught and then do it again before the rest of us start going, hey, maybe he just wants to fuck a kid. Do you know what I mean? Like, sure, the first time, all right, James, he's a young guy. Maybe the dude yelled, I'll give you the benefit. Of, maybe the dude lied about his age. I'll give you the benefit of the doubt the second time. I, I, I'm a bit more sus, oh, but but okay, all right, just don't do it again. What is it now? The How many times has it happened? Accused of pursuing up to eight underage boys. That's enough. You know, I would have stopped it one. I, you know, actually, I would have stopped it thinking about it. You know what I mean? Fuck. Eight. Imagine getting accused of, of pursuing eight underage boys and you can still jump on your YouTube channel and go, hey, what's up, sisters? <laughs> you know? Oh. Fucking oh. crazy. More than 15. More than 15, according to this. I mean, this is like, if... If it's hard to keep track of how many underage boys there are, it's an issue. You know what I mean? Like it's becoming a bit of an issue if if I start going, well, three, that's fucked. No, there's eight. Oh, that's terrible. And then there's 15. Fuck, it's doubling. I feel like every time I look at I, I every time I look at James Charles, the amount of boys James Charles is accused of messaging. I feel like I'm refreshing the price of Bitcoin back in 2017. Oh, there's more. Oh, it's doubled again. <laughs> Fuck, man. So what is, has, has he lost anything from, from this? I saw that he lost his like makeup deal with Morphe. They pulled all of his products from, sh from shelves. Uh, but that's, this isn't what I want to talk about. This is something that amused me. Keelan told me about this. For some reason, whenever 
a content creator gets in trouble for abusing their editor. Keelan just knows about it and tells me about it. And I feel like he's trying to warn me. I feel like he's trying to send me a message. He's Because I haven't done anything yet, but Keelan is always showing me the consequences of these actions. And it makes me feel like he thinks something's coming. And there is. But I, but every time he shows me a, a, an article about a content creator losing their career for abusing their editor, it buys him an extra three months. But every time he makes a spelling error, it, it, it you know, it shortens that that safe period by a week, you know. So it seems like every video he he makes, it takes him down a month. Um, so let's pull up this article of of James Charles. He's, he's in trouble with one of his employees. Uh, show me the headline. I want to read the headline here. All right. James Charles sued by ex-employee who claims he made her shave his ass. Okay. Kelly Rocklean worked for Charles as an editor, producer, and creative director for six months. That's a lot of jobs. She alleges wrongful termination after she passed out at a nail salon while with Charles and suffered a concussion. Wait, that's why she got fired? <laughs> that's so funny. Like, she passed out at a nail salon. James Charles looked at her and was like, oh, yuck. Like, instead of calling for an ambulance, he got out termination papers. Like, ugh, passing out at a nail salon? You should be working, bitch. Fired. Rockling claims she worked 80 hours or more a week. I mean, that's. I feel like the amount of hours that you work is not a complaint unless you were not paid for them. 80 hours is a lot, actually. Okay, maybe that's maybe that's an issue. Rockling claims she worked 80 hours or more a week. She also alleges Charles called her names like bitch. Uh, and but what? But what type of bitch? You know, because there's there's me looking at Keelan and going, "Oh, you fucking bitch," and then there's James Charles going, "What's up, bitch?" You know, like what type of bitch? If I call my female coworker a bitch, that's an issue. If James Charles goes, "What's up, bitches?" Like, how gay was the bitch? Because that's very very important. I feel like James is allowed to call someone a bitch as long as he's not going, "You fucking bitch." If he's going, "What's up, bitches?" That's fine. If he's going, "You fucking bitch," that's an issue. He also used the N-word in front of her, which another source also told Insider. I mean, he's a YouTuber, so I believe it. <laughs> um, so where, where's this? Where, show me something about him getting her to shave his ass. Because Keelan told me about this and he was like, oh, depending on the context of it, I feel like that's fine. <laughs> Hey, bro, there's no context needed. If you're an editor and you're employed as a producer, my asshole is not in the job description. But they were best friends. They, but they weren't best friends. She was an editor who worked there for six months. If you think that you... Three years? Three years? Yeah. Why did it say six months before? Yeah. It's, I read something. Okay, three or four years. I still feel like sh shaving of the asshole is a bit of a request, you know? Like, in what fucking... Why does he need someone else to shave his asshole? Why can't he go to someone to wax it or get laser hair removal, dude? You can afford it. I wouldn't want my rim irradiated, though. Go go up to the, to the bit you highlighted. In the suit, James's previous creative director claims the now 21-year-old unfairly fired her and did not pay her. Okay, well, that's fine if she's complaining about overtime, didn't get paid. But the claims get even ickier, as Kelly alleges the star would make unreasonable requests like asking her to shave his asshole. Yes, really. So that was for Coachella. Coach, oh, okay, dude. If you need your ass shaved for Coachella... Although, did you see the photo of his ass in Coachella? It was a good photo. I saw it 
as I was scrolling up on Instagram, which was a trap. If you're scrolling down on Instagram, you see male head first. I saw the lower half of James Charles first, got excited, and then I saw his head. You see, now, I understand that Miss Kelly may have had a very traumatic experience shaving his ass, but we have to agree she did a great job despite the circumstances. This bitch can, sorry, this woman can work well under pressure. That is... A well-shaven ass. Look at that. She didn't miss a spot. Not a single hair. You know? I mean, I, I, I just feel like he could have asked someone else or gone to someone. Like, are you that busy, dude? Like, if you're going to wear that to Coachella, I would want... I mean, I wouldn't trust... I can barely trust Keelan to, to spell the captions in my videos. If I gave him a shaver and my asshole, I'd be a bit concerned. What are you doing after work? <laughs> Dude, I don't know about shaving asshole. Okay. Imagine having to go over and essentially pick James up out. This is what this is her saying this. Imagine having to go over and essentially pick James up out of bed, tell him to brush his teeth, <laughs> okay, and tell him, "Okay, what what do you want to eat?" Okay, someone is coming to do your laundry. Okay, I'm going to get your laundry, I guess. Okay, time to start filming. You don't want to film? Well, we both know you have to, so please let's think about it. <laughs> this is something that you and I do every week. Okay, man, don't expose me. No, that that the filming thing is something that happens. But you but I you get here and most you you've never arrived at my house and had to get me out of bed just to bend me over and shave my ass. <laughs> That's never happened. I have arrived and have been in bed. Have you? Yes. Surely not heaps. Like three times. Okay, that's not too bad. Over a whole working relationship three times. I work late. <laughs> I perform. Okay, guys. Sometimes I will be in bed, but I've never got made kill and make me breakfast and shave my ass. <laughs> okay, I think that is a li that crosses the line a little bit. Fuck, man. I don't know. I just think that if you really need your ass shaving that, how does that conversation even go? Hey, bitch. Um, so I'm going to Coachella and I'm going to wear this outfit and I need you to shave my ass. And uh, and then and then like a black person comes in and he just starts screaming the N-word at him. Get out. Do my laundry. Anyway, bitch. So uh, I was thinking uh, you could just shave my ass. And then she's like, well, James, you just got out of bed, right? He goes, yeah. Well, that means you haven't showered, right? Yeah. Well, are you going to have a shower? Bitch, I'm running late. You know I need to film today. Get to shaving. And if I see a single ingrown hair, you're done. <laughs> oh, yeah, zooming in. Yeah, there's a spot there. There's a, Although, are they, is that... Is that uh, a shaving mark or is that like a, a freckle or a, or a pimple? Dude, we can't put this in the fucking episode. Keelan's like zooming in way too close. So get, the, get, his, get his ass off the screen. That's enough. Don't put that in the episode. That'll get me fucking taken down. Now, anyway, guys, speaking of shaving your ass, this episode is sponsored by Manscaped. Bro, what a segue. This is the episode of Segways, the Spearhead Sunday Segway Extravaganza. Uh, Manscaped sponsors the, the show. Uh, go to manscaped.com and use code SPEARS for 20% off and free shipping. Really great deal. Uh, and it really helps out the show. If you enjoy the show and uh, you need to shave your nuts or your asshole, uh, and you can't afford uh, your editor to do it, unlike me, you should head, out, head down to uh, manscaped.com, use code SPEARS for 20% off and free shipping. Mirror, mirror on the wall, what is the best brand for my balls? Manscaped, TM, of course. Hold up. Is that a nose pube? Good thing our partners at Manscaped... Doesn't this sound like me? Good thing our partners at Manscaped are here to ensure you're taking care of your manhood and your nose hairs with their new performance package. They sent me the nose trimmer. I haven't used it. I don't have any nose hairs, but I did turn it on and it works. Do not read. Host talk about their feelings on long nose slash ear hair. Host could tell a story about a funny nose hair or ear hair experience. Host could talk about how painful it is to pull your nose hair out. Dude, I've done that. 
I've any <clears throat> any of my Italian Greek listeners get this shit. Sick of pulling your nose. I've pulled my nose hair out. You know when you when you get a blood nose and then and then you just you got bloody boogers that are stuck to your fucking hair noses and you gotta you gotta pull them out and you just start crying like someone who shaved James Charles ass. That's not good. You don't want that. What you want is the Manscaped Performance Package. It's the ultimate men's hygiene bundle. Included in this new package is the Weed Whacker Ear and Nose Hair Trimmer. You can probably stick it up your ass in case you got a few. Don't do that. Do not do that. That's not in the copy. I went off script. Uh, which is waterproof. Okay, well, ma- no, don't, don't. And it includes a 90,000 RPM motor-powered Well, It might feel... No, don't do. Don't. Maybe the other end. No, that's bad. I, Manscaped and me don't want you to do that. Uh, they've got a 9,000 RPM motor-powered 360-degree rotary dual blade system. It's dual-wielding, dude. Stick it in your ear. Uh, they also have pube trimmers, which I use frequently. They're really good. They've got a little laser sight on it. I don't know why, uh, but it is cool. I feel like I've got a fucking lightsaber when I shave my balls, uh, which is the Jedi way. Um, so check out manscaped.com. Use code SPEARS for 20% off and free shipping. Really good deal. Honestly, brilliant fucking products. I highly recommend them um all right what else do we have to talk about here um all right we have uh oh a little quick little plug Greeley uh was on luke and lewis if you want some updated jail tales a lot of people have been asking when Greeley's going to come back on spearhead sundays he was only here for a day uh and we were we were recording luke and lewis we thought we would get him on luke and lewis and uh luke adds an interesting perspective as someone who doesn't know Greeley as well as i do he has a lot of questions that you yourselves may ask um great episode there's a few more jail tales but uh uh, you know, Greeley's kind of past all of that now and uh, he's focus on, focusing on the present and the future and it's a really, really great, interesting, funny episode that I recommend you watch. Check it out on Luke and Lewis. Um, what do we have here? Uh, Ellen is finishing her show, Ellen DeGeneres. That's one thing that Twitter managed to, to, to create change on was Ellen DeGeneres finishing her show. I feel like after all of that controversy of her being a horrible cunt came out, she just would have looked at her. Surely she just would have. She would have been really stressed about it, and then one day she just would have opened up the banking app on her phone and and gone. Well, what, what am I doing? Why am I doing this show? She clearly doesn't enjoy it that much anymore. She's just stopped. So her next season, season nineteen, is her final season. I need something new to challenge me. Okay, well that's a lie, you know, because it seemed like the only thing that was challenging you was was. <laughs> It seemed like her work was quite challenging in the sense that she she figured out new ways to torture the intern every couple seasons, you know? Oh, how could I break down someone emotionally this season? Uh, Ellen, I think the, uh, the, the chair gag, you know, the music not stopping until you sit on the chair is getting a little bit stale. Maybe... Maybe we could try something new. You hear, oh, he, he, I, I've got something new. How about instead of the chair during rehearsal, you could be the chair. And you sit there fucking naked, and I'll, I'll, and instead of me sitting on you, I'll use these boots, these spiked boots, and I'll stand on your neck, and that's how we'll rehearse the show. Don't never suggest an idea again, bitch. Get out. What does it say? How much money she make? Eighty-four million dollars in annual revenue. I mean, I, I make that. If, if I make that money once, it, it's done. I'm never doing, doing. Doing a daily talk show to me sounds like it would be like a really fun thing, an interesting challenge to do for three seasons. Absolute hell to do for like 10 years. That's my perspective. I would love to do like the Spears talk show that goes for two, three, maybe four seasons. Then I'm out. I could never be the type of person who puts 20 years like into the Tonight Show or the Ellen Show or the Wendy Williams fart extravaganza. I could never do that. Like, I feel like the stress of that would just turn you into the most horrible cunt ever, uh, as evidenced by Ellen DeGeneres' behavior. I mean, what what the fuck is going to challenge her? I guess stand up. She might go back to that. Good on it. Get your money. Who's replacing her? Someone replacing her? What are they going to do? Tiffany Haddish. I'm sure it's not just going to be Ellen in blackface. Is it actually going to be Tiffany? So, t- man, that, what a big gig for Tiffany Haddish. She's a cool. I I really like her. I uh, I feel like her comedy's not for me as as a white guy from Australia, but I love. She works so hard. 
Oh, Ellen DeGeneres tipped to be replaced by actress Tiffany Haddish. I mean, that shit's probably not true. Or maybe it is. I hope it is. It seems like the 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 black talk shows go a lot better than the white ones. Ellen was kind of the only. You know what's interesting for for women? Uh, it seems to be minorities are the real breadwinner. For men, you have to be a straight white guy, or it doesn't work. Like tonight shows, that's the, that's what it is. If the show's at night, you got to be straight and white. If it's in the day, you can be gay. That seems to be the rule. Like all of the Tonight Shows that are really successful are straight white guys. Who's that one chick from YouTube? She just got cancelled. No, not Liza Koshy. The other one. The she's uh, Indian, I think. She just got the can. She had a really popular YouTube show, and then they gave her a TV show, and it was horrific. Lily Singh. She got canned. Maybe she needs to go during the daytime because she, I believe, is also bisexual. Maybe it'll work. Straight and white at night, during the day, you can be gay. I think that's the formula. You have to be a minority to be successful on daytime television. That's where the real money is anyway. Anyway, guys, good on it. Let's move on here. Let's do miscellaneous bit at the end. If you don't know, miscellaneous bit at the end is the uh, final part of the podcast before the Patreon section starts. For all of you cashed up cunts helping me get those Air, Air Max Pod Pro, whatever the fuck they are. Dude, I saw some of those AirPod Pro Max things. How much are the base versions worth? $800, $800 right? So that's that's one of the Patreon goals, of course. But one of the end Patreon goals, one of the Patreons themselves in the Discord actually linked it. Uh, a company, and this will probably be my next investment, has come out with a $10,400 version of the uh, AirPod Pros. Now that is a flex. Let me pull it up here. It's in the uh, Lewis Spears Patreon Discord. Where is it? It's in the... uh, I'll get it up. Awesome. Oh, my internet's also not working. That's fucking great. Okay, never mind. That's awesome. Uh, that'll be the next Patreon goal is getting a fucking internet connection. Uh, anyway, that'll be my next Patreon goal. Let's, uh, uh, miscellaneous bit of the end is where I answer life advice questions sent in by you, the loyal listener. If you have a question for me or a story that you think I would enjoy, send it through to podcast at lewspears.com, L-E-W spears.com. Uh, make sure you summarize it in the subject line or I will not read it. Here we have this. Girl I'm dating admitted to be a f- to to being a financial dominatrix. That sounds expensive. Hey Lewis, I loved your show in Melbourne. Thank you, mate. <coughs> I'll get straight into it. Uh, my name is uh, Tom. I recently started dating this new girl. We've been on a few dates and all in all, it's gone pretty well. We went out for a drive and ice cream a few days ago and chatted for a good hour or two. Towards the end of the night, the conversation steered towards previous relationships and my date brought up that she had slash still is sort of acting as a financial dominatrix for men she's met online. That is to say she would sex with them and tell them when and where they could masturbate. Apparently these guys were into being treated as sissies, which is how she described it, and she wouldn't let them finish until she sent until, unless they sent her money or bought her, her things. Right. At least she's being up front early in the relationship. How long uh, you started dating this new girl? You've been on a few dates. Okay, so it's not like super serious. That's good that she told you. That's up to you whether you can deal with that. <clears throat> this was obviously a shock to hear from a girl I was seeing, especially given it was a third date. Uh, that's not, I think, good on it. Third date is probably a good time. It's not a first date. I don't know if it's a second date. It's a third date conversation. I rate that actually. But I obviously had to know more, so I questioned her further on it. She admitted that in the past she had sex with a guy she met online for money, but that she hadn't done so with the two people she was sort of currently still treating as cash pigs. Apparently they had run into some financial trouble recently and were not as keen to pay the the usual treatment due to COVID. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that it, it hit us all hard, didn't it? You know? It hit all of us very hard. My business suffered. I couldn't sell tickets. I'm sure this woman's business suffered. She couldn't get 
men to come for cash. Uh, did she get job keeper, come keeper? Uh, but she had swapped, she had swapped nudes and sexted with them. For free? Come on. Here's the, the, the a real basic principle of business. People don't get addicted. No, wait. People get addicted to discounts. They don't get, they don't get addicted to free. That's the rule. Okay, look, that's fine then. Free sample. We've all been there. But she had swapped nudes and sexted with them. She did say, however, that one of them had paid her to come to her house and clean her room while she watched and insulted him. Oh, he paid her money for the privilege of cleaning her house while she watched and called him a pussy. Dude, give him my number. My house is a mess. I would love to... I mean, isn't it funny that James Charles is getting cancelled for this behaviour? Whereas this guy is paying for the privilege of being insulted while he does his job. This is... James Charles needs to connect with these people. The people who would love to pay him to shave his ass and then, and then get called the N-word while they do it. I'm not the type to think less of someone because of their fetishes, but I'm not really sure how I feel about this girl now. The night ended fine. The conversation short, sort of diff, drifted off to a different topic. She said she was still actively trying to get more money from these guys. Oh, so she's not giving it up. <clears throat> Obviously, I would not be okay with her meeting up for sex with them, but if she was just sending dirty texts and getting paid bank, that might be fine with me, question mark. I don't know. I'm not sure how I feel about her sending nudes. That might cross the line, but outside of her extra income stream, she's a really cool girl. What are your thoughts, Lewis? How would you approach this situation further, and would you be okay with your partner sexting other men if she was making mad cash? Have a shit one, Tom. Uh, for me, absolutely not. No, uh, definitely would not be okay with that, and I wouldn't stand for it, and and I wouldn't be able to date someone like that. But that is me. Uh, it's a tough look. It's a tough one because the reality of it is whether or not she is meeting these men, getting in a relationship with her is and does invite these men into your personal life even if they don't know you exist. It's bringing that into your life. That's what you need to think about. Like, it's one thing to be like, oh, yeah, if my girl's sexting other people for money, I guess that's fine. It's another thing to sit there on the couch watching Netflix and she goes, oh, one second, I got to send a mess. I got to do some work. And you're just like watching her sext. Do you know what I mean? Like the reality of it is so much more confronting and real, obviously, than the idea of it. The idea, anyone can be okay with the idea of something. Oh, an idea of an open relationship sounds fun. I can fuck whoever I want. She can fuck whoever we want, but we love each other. The idea of it sounds great. The reality of it is not the idea of it. The reality of it is sitting there and watching uh, your girl sex some other dude for like, you know, a hundred bucks or maybe some lingerie delivered via Amazon. I wouldn't be okay with it. I wouldn't be able to, uh, not, I guess I just, I just, I would never get myself in a situation where that would ever be a question. I would, if it was me, I would go, hey, thanks so much for telling me you're an awesome girl. I'm not okay with this. Uh, I'm not judging you for it, but it's not for me. Uh, bye. Uh, I would not, I, I personally, I would not go, if you want to date me, you have to stop doing that. Because uh, if she really, really doesn't want to stop that, that will lead to resentment. So you either need to be okay with it or not okay with it. There's no like, oh, you got to stop it for me. You either move on or you invite that into your life. And I feel like, I don't have an experience with this, but I feel like the reality of being with someone who is sexting other people would be so different from the idea of it. It's not just a message from your point of view. Do you know what I mean? That's my thoughts on it. I wouldn't be cool with it. Maybe you are. You need to have a real think and figure out whether or not you're cool with it and 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 how. what does that look like long term? Like, because if it truly is a business, is she going to scale this shit 
Is she going to turn into like a really high paid one with lots of clients? Like, uh, I, I feel like if, if you really want to, if you're looking for a relationship, you need to play this out in your mind where if this is her main hustle, she's going to have more than two guys. Because I feel like, look, if it was a side hustle that she was doing for a bit of extra cash, I'd be like, yeah, cut that shit out if you want to be with me. If it's her main thing, you have no real right to say, cut that out because that's her career. That'd be like someone going, oh, I'll only date you if you're not a comedian. I'd be like, yeah, cool, see ya. If it's her main thing, you need to think about, well, fuck, what does this look like if it scales? What if she now starts making insane amounts of money from this, but she's also really busy? What does that look like? Does she have a public profile? Will everybody know that I'm the guy with the financial dominatrix girlfriend? Will my family be cool with that? Will that fuck with my head if they're not? What will my friends think? Will there be images of her online? Do you know what I mean? Like this, I feel like that lifestyle is something that you need to be so fucking on board with and 100% okay. There needs to be no doubt in your mind at all or it won't work. That's what I think. If there's any doubt at all, that's just not working because that thought, oh, she's missing someone, that's going to be there for ever the remainder of your relationship and that's going to kill it that's what i think so ultimately dude it needs to be up to you are you 100 percent okay with it if there's an inkling of doubt in your mind run bro <clears throat> that's my thoughts anyway that's where i'm going to wrap up uh this episode uh i'm going to continue on for patreon uh for for another bit so if you want to jump over to the patreon and uh listen to it there uh, i would appreciate it. there's a discord and you get early access to the podcast and all that kind of good stuff uh, and there's a bunch of other rewards just check your tier i don't care which one you jump on just do whatever you feel is appropriate it helps uh support the show um otherwise manscape.com use code spears 20 percent off and free shipping uh and uh, i will talk to you guys next sunday i hope you enjoyed this episode send me an email podcast at loose uh and uh yeah i'll talk to you guys next Next Sunday or in a couple of seconds if you're on Patreon. All right. I'm Lewis Spears. Thank you for listening. I'll talk to you soon. Have a shit one.